Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. Up, everybody's having a great week. Last week, I posted this in one of my last videos. So, although it looks like I have tons of equipment sitting around and I'm not getting anything done, that's not really it. I am busting them out every day. That's why I'm not putting out as many videos, but I'm tired. I mean, this one came in yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Let's see, two days ago, oh, two days ago, all of these came in in the last two days. So I know it looks like I am never going to catch up on all those repairs, but you might be surprised on how many units I do get through in a single day. So come along with me to the shop. I'm going to show you an entire day of diagnosing and repairs during this extremely busy spring. On the way to work, just another manic Monday. I first pulled this steel trimmer off my bench because I replaced the kill switch on it, but found out later that also the blue kill wire had to shorten it. So it's waiting on parts. So I grab a customer steel trimmer and it's not running right. Clutch and a head. First thing I'm gonna do, I always check the fuel and surprise, surprise, there is definitely water in it. So I'm gonna remove this water and check the running, see if that helps any. Starts up pretty good, but as you can see, yep, the head keeps spinning, the clutch is definitely engaged all the time, so we gotta fix that. I do keep that clutch in stock because I chained so many of them. And as you can see here, that clutch shoe right there is sticking out constantly. The spring is sprung and it needs to be replaced. Got the new one in, fits snug as a bug in a rug. Go ahead and he wants a new head. I'm taking out his green steel adapter out of his old head to put it into this new one because I want to save him a couple bucks. Check the running again, starts right up. But it's acting a little funky and the head is still spinning. I don't know what that's about. We'll have to figure that one out. Try to adjust, doesn't change it. I go ahead and let it run a little bit longer just to make sure it's still not water and the, the carburetor may be trying to escape or something like that and, and making it run lean, but no, nope, it just keeps spinning. I decide I'm gonna check the valve clearance and see what it looks like. Check the valves, and yeah, both of them are a little loose. It was pulling a little janky when I was trying to start it, and you get you get that one telltale sign that the valves need to be adjusted. So, got them set. Let's try it again. The head stops. Success. Pull out a parks department steel trimmer and they said they needed a rewind. I do keep one in stock, but when I pulled it apart to find out the rewind was perfect, it is actually this little starter pole right here is completely destroyed. So I'm gonna pull this starter cup off and I gotta get my piston stop in there. But of course, whenever I go to do that, ugh, the plug boot rips off of the little wire coil that goes on the spark plug. So. One more step I have to do in this process. I gotta put it back together. If this has happened to you, I have already made a video on this. I will leave a link right up above. The plug boot is too mushy to wanna go back on, so I'm just gonna get rid of that little section. I don't need it. <laughs> And with a little squeezing and turning and grease, we're back together. Their other trimmer that the parks brought in looks a little scary. Um, they think it needs a primer and a head and a check running bin sitting. Let's check the gas tank. Yeah, what is that? Like egg yolk. I don't know. <laughs> the detergents in the gas. That is disgusting. This thing, I wish I had smell-o-vision so you could smell how bad this thing is. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to need a little work. So I pull up an estimate for them and at $185, I got to call the customer. I leave a message and wait for a call back. 
Next customer up, been sitting three years. Now guys, whenever you've had something that's been sitting for a long time with no gas in it, a lot of times put some fresh fuel in it, but what you end up doing is stopping too short. Prime it, prime it like 40 times if you have to. Eventually, if you can get some gas through there, it'll start working those diaphragms in the carburetor to loosen them back up and it'll get you running again. A lot of times customers give up and they bring it to the shop and that's all I do. I prime it a bunch of times, start it up, sit there, run it, let the diaphragms loosen up, try to start it again, starts just fine, and it's a little money in my pocket. Don't give up, guys. Just let it run at full throttle. It'll keep loosening up those diaphragms. You'll be good for the season. Next up is a customer's Husqvarna 322L. This particular unit is one of my nemesis's. Was running, won't start. <sighs> First of all, I check the gas. Wow, that stuff is super blue. Let's check it and make sure there's no water in it. Oh, there's water. Look at how murky that looks. That's because I sucked it from the bottom. Now, if you go and suck it from the top, it's clear, but water sinks to the bottom. So whenever you're checking to see if there's water in your gas, make sure to always get all the way down to the bottom. So I throw some fresh fuel in it, go start it up. Let's see what it does. This thing won't hit a lick. Ugh. So customer had put a new spark plug in there and I saw the top of it, but didn't really pay attention. Saw that it was new, but it's the wrong plug. So I look up to make sure the plug that I normally put them in is right. And it is. And as you can see, there is a huge difference in these plugs. So I put the correct plug in. Let's see if it starts. And it starts right up. Now I gotta play with the choke here because it had water in it. A lot of times you can pop the choke and it'll keep forcing some fuel through and that'll help it to get rid of all that water that was in the carburetor and hopefully pick up and run full throttle. But this one was giving me issues. It just kept running at half throttle for some reason. trigger stopped working <laughs> and when I let go of it it stayed at half throttle for a second and then it went down to nothing and when I was pushing the throttle back in I could tell there was no tension on it whatsoever I figured the throttle cable broke as I was running it great this is like that money pit movie you fix one thing the next thing breaks you fix one thing the next thing breaks I do not like these trimmers so <laughs> looks like I'm gonna have to go in deeper so I gotta look here and I'm pushing the throttle, but it is not moving anything on the carburetor at all. So let's open it up and see what's going on with this cable. Air filter is gross. And everything looks really moist. Hmm. Once I got it open, you can see, yeah, it's just flopping around in there. There's nothing holding it in place. So I got to open it up more. Oh, what is this little nut where it's supposed to fit in there has popped out. And what is this tape? <laughs> Did the customer tell me he'd been inside here? Absolutely not. They don't ever tell me everything. So I look a little further to find out that somebody definitely had this pulled apart. And when they put it back together, they crunched the throttle cable sheath between the plastic parts there instead of putting it in its little channel. Oh, gosh. So now that I got everything where it's supposed to be, I'm going to put this back together and see if it works. <laughs> Mind you, this is the most unfun throttle control assembly to put back together. I've got it back together, but lo and behold, it's still not working. It is going down and only coming half up. What is going on here? Oh no, I look on the other side of the carburetor and the spring that returns the throttle lever is broken. 
it needs a carburetor, which is $122. Once I'm done with that, that's $122 for a carburetor, $40 labor, probably a throttle cable and a plug. The customer's looking at around $200. This one's getting double X'd and was a huge waste of my time because they're definitely going to not want to pay me the $40 in the half hour of labor that I just put in to figuring all that out. So the lady brings in her battery powered chainsaw. She'd been cutting straw. I, I don't know really, but she didn't know you had to use bar oil and <laughs> said she cut with it for two hours, which locked the tip of her bar up, completely ruined her chain. And uh, I can't get her another bar. So she's going to have to get a hold of Black & Decker. So next up on the list, I did get a carburetor in for a steel mini tiller that I had ordered. So I had already replaced the fuel line on this. This thing sat for a very long time. Normally I would just kit the carburetor, but this thing was scary inside. It sat for a very long time and I'm not messing with it. I am definitely just gonna go ahead and replace that carburetor. It's gonna save me time, money, and frustration. <laughs> so, pop it on there, take it outside, start it up, runs like a brand new Tilla. And of course, Echo's gotta get her stunning time in, but I do have to chain her to a lawnmower because she ran out in the street the other day. Got the parts in for this Poulan chainsaw for its rewind. The assist spring got wankered out. So, came with the kit. I'm gonna throw that in there real quick. Now this was a complete pity repair that I took in. <laughs> I do not really work on these Tecumseh mini tillers anymore. They are super old and I have never been so happy to see something that was scored in my entire life. This piston is completely gone inside. I don't know if you can see it really well, but there is tons of up and down scoring on it and it only had about 95 pounds of compression. So. Next up, one of my friends dropped off their Red Max trimmer. These are pretty sweet. Now they're really light and powerful. The only problem I see with them is they don't have any adjustments on the carburetor, but the carburetors actually do last for a long time. This thing had 120 pounds of compression. He had some good gas in it. He just said it sat for a long time and he couldn't get to the start. So I'm gonna go ahead, take it outside, do my prime it, you know, 40 times trick. Go to try to start it and it's not hitting at all. So next trick, I'm gonna pull some gas out of the gas tank. And I'm going to flood the cylinder. When things sit for this long, sometimes if you can just get them primed up and get everything moving again, you're good to go. So flood the stink out of it with a couple daubers full of gasoline, take it outside. I hold the throttle while I'm trying to start it to keep the airflow coming through. And winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now, once I get it started, I do not let go of that throttle control. I keep it going full max. That way it'll loosen up those diaphragms, hopefully start letting that needle get some gas through there. And in cases like this, I just set it to the side after I ran it for a bit and I will start it again later and make sure it's good to go. Now, I did want to show you this. My mechanic, Alex, brought this down. This is some Honda fuel line and we had not seen this before. When he went to go put it back on the fuel nipple, it was not go back on and there was a squishy fuel liner inside the fuel line like this. It's straight up mushy. Um, we hadn't really seen much of this before, but it's going to definitely be an issue if you take your fuel line off and try to put it back on. It's just going to squish up in there instead of actually go over the fuel nipple. So something to watch out for, guys. And then every day I leave the shop to come pick my kid up from school where I have 10 glorious minutes of peace and quiet with no phone ringing. Once I get back to the shop, I only got 30 minutes before we close, so I set this auger up on the bench so I can work on it in the morning. It's a leaks fuel, so it's going to be so sort of simple. I think that it is this grommet here. Whenever I squish it back and forth, it seems really loose. You can see here, it should not jiggle around in its hole that much. So hopefully in the morning I can throw a new grommet and some fuel lines in here and they'll be good to go. And as much as I'd like to say that I caught up, more stuff just keeps coming in, guys. <laughs> I got tons of units today. You know, as many as I got out, I've got eight more in. So that's just the way it rolls. Before we head out, we load up a generator because we got a delivery on the way home. Last but not least, I pack up Old Glory and call it a day.
Now, mind you guys, I am helping customers constantly all day long too, because my bench is right there as you walk in the front door. So the phone's ringing, customers are coming in. I'm trying to work on things. A lot of times I walk away from something. I got to come back and then I got to remember what I did. You know that, did I screw those screws in? Nope. I got to check them all again to make sure. So it's a crazy time of the year. And thank you for hanging out with me. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me at Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day.